it is so important to practice your drawing skills every day and when the weather's fine it gives me the perfect excuse to go outside and draw nature. In the past, botanist drew, observed and classified flowers and plants. Today we have some beautiful drawings and they are perfect examples of what to leave in and what to leave out when you're drawing nature. I love clematis and I have or had at least six or seven different varieties in my garden. There's so much information, it can be really confusing. Like a scientist or an analyst, you often have to dissect or take apart your subject to really get to know it well. Clematis are funny plants. You really have to know which variety you have. Their pruning habits require that some are pruned back heavily while others grow on old wood. I actually propagated my own clematis from a cutting and I got a totally different plant. It ended up looking like the clematis rugucci. Funny that, because I definitely took this cutting from my purple jackmanai. Doing art well requires you to truly know your subject. This requires lots and lots of observation. As with most disciplines, you must do research and study. An artist must spend time observing their subjects, collecting reference materials, immersing themselves in the subject's characteristics. Books, magazines, social media, there are many ways to learn about your subject. But when it comes to art, the very best way is to study the real thing in nature, real life. What's great about nature is that you can study it any time. No appointments needed. All you need is decent weather and you can go ahead and observe. You can get different angles, different lighting and so, so many different subjects. I believe it was Mozart who was inspired to write many of his compositions simply by listening to the sounds of the birds. Bird song. Just like a scientist or an analyst, you have to break your subject down into its main components and look at it from different angles to really get to know it. Not only are you observing its composition, its shape, its colour, you are also looking at its nature, its history, its origins and its patterns and its symbolism. Clematis comes in all shapes and sizes, some the size of saucers and some petite and small like the Clematis bracciata from KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. We have some large really flowery specimens from Japan and over the years they've created many hybrids that are intricate and beautiful.
choose a topic and gain deeper understanding of its unique characteristics. Learn its form, proportions, its textures and colors, its specific traits. I can also take my drawings in other directions, such as creating designs, combining different flowers and coming up with something totally new. Now that you've fully observed, studied and mastered your subject, you can now play with the rules with intention and with style. Knowing your client or subject requires research, expertise, hands-on experience, interpretation and appreciation. By applying these principles, we can form a profound connection and uncover our subjects true essence. Thank you for joining me on this Clematis study. Wishing you much love and peace in all your endeavours and in your creative journey.